Hi everyone, we meet again for Massive Open Online Course MOOC for BSR 255, Building Surveying Practice 2. My name is Nur Hidayah and I will be your instructor. Today, our module is Module 1 on Investigation of Building Element Defects and Method of Condition Building Assessment. In this module, we will highlight the external compound defects as well as other information and activities to ensure the information is received successfully. Do you know what external compound area is? External area describe all items outside the building but inside the site boundary. Exterior property means the open space on the premises and tree lawns area, the adjoining property the accessory structure is under the control of owner of such premises. As you can see here, external compound is describing the site and ground condition. Start after perimeter drain until your fence. Whatever comes between that, consider as external compound. Before we start our journey, let's take a look at our learning outcome and learning outline. The objective of this module is to identify the types of building external compound and the defects related to building external compound. Here is topic content outline. This outline includes the overview of external compound area, the definition and example of external compound area. Besides that, we will also will learn and understand the types of external compound effects. Now, let's start our journey and I hope you will enjoy this glimpse into the journey on this model. At first, you have to understand what is actually external compound area for the building. According to CPBS 101 version 2, building condition survey is divided into three areas such as external, fabric, and services. This is to examine the condition and significant defects of the buildings. External area means within the boundary of the premises. This describes the site and ground condition, parking areas, driveway, walkway, car park, landscape, compound lighting, fences, gates, road, guard house, review disposal, and so on. Before we identify the types of defects, let's take a closer look what is type of external compound element. Here the example of external compound area of the building. As you can see here, external works describe all items outside the building but still inside the site boundary. It including parking area, loading and unloading area, trash area, roadways, sideways, walkway, parkway, driveway, landscape area, paved area, boundary walls, railing, fencing, and tough areas. After we understand the characteristic of external compound, now let's learn and understand the defects related to this space. The main causes of failure related to external works include poor design, bad workmanship, soil settlement, chemical attack on materials, weathering element, mechanical damage, and vandalism. Now, I want to share with you types of defects that usually happen at external area. Now, I want to show you the first element for external area. Fencing could be used to separate the site from adjacent properties and land. This can be used to stop or cut down any unwanted pedestrian or vehicular access, to provide privacy, to give delineation between areas, and so on. The first defect that usually found at gate is rusting. No matter which type of fencing you select, you will always face some common problems such as rust, corrosion, and many more. 
This problem can be easily damage your fences. However, there are so many ways to fix this kind of issues. Generally, homeowners use various types of sealant to prevent these damages. The second element for external area is a walkway. There are many types of defects happen in this area. The first one is weed growth. The most common problem is the weed are growing in the crack between the pavers. Weeds in your paver are not just unsightly, but will eventually cause structural damage to the patio or walkway. Here, I have identified and pictured some specific distress or failure of pavement. The first defects of pavement is potholes. It's small, bowl-shaped depression in the pavement surface that penetrate all the way through the asphalt layer down to the base course. They generally have sharp edge and vertical side near the top of the holes. Potholes are the result of moisture infiltration and usually at the end result of untreated alligator cracking. The second defect is alligator cracking. Alligator cracking is a load associated structural failure. Till failure can be due to weakness in the surface, base or subgrade, a surface or base that is too thin, poor drainage or the combination of all three. It's often start in the wheel path as longitudinal cracking and end up as alligator cracking after severe distress. Other than that is shoving defects. Shoving is the formation of ripples across a pavement. This characteristic shape is why this type of distress is sometimes called washboarding. Shoving occurs at location having severe horizontal stresses such as intersection. It is typically caused by excess of fat, too much fine aggregates, rounded aggregates, too soft and asphalt, or a weak granular base. Other than that is shoving defects. Shoving is the formation of ripples across a pavement. This characteristic shape is why this type of distress is sometimes called washboarding. Shoving occurs at location having severe horizontal stresses such as intersection. It is typically caused by excess of fat, too much fine aggregates, rounded aggregates, too soft and asphalt, or a weak granular base. Other than that is shoving defects. Shoving is the formation of ripples across a pavement. This characteristic shape is why this type of distress is sometimes called washboarding. Shoving occurs at location having severe horizontal stresses such as intersection. It is typically caused by excess of fat, too much fine aggregates, rounded aggregates, too soft and asphalt, or a weak granular base. The third element of external area is landscape. After a heavy rain, it can be frustrating to see pool of water standing in the yard for days on end. Excessive water that puddles and pool around the property creates a muddy mess that ruins the beauty, health and vitality of your landscape. A few warning signs to look for include flooding. Flooding is a common issue caused by landscape drainage problems. If the lawn isn't graded properly, it can cause water collect in some of the most inconvenient locations. Persistently, soggy areas make it incredibly difficult to mow the lawn. The second one is soil erosion. You might be thinking, what's the big deal with a little loose dirt in the yard? Soil erosion is actually a significant issue caused by improper landscape drainage. Soil erosion can affect the stability and structural integrity of trees within the property by compromising the foundation where root need to grow deep in the soil. Soil erosion will also not allow grass to easily take root in the affected area. You may also refer to other resources for further reference about the topic. And that's the end of the model. 
I hope you found it valuable and know that I really appreciate for listening to me. See you next time. Bye.